But then I begin to see my son not breathing. The main thing that we want people to take away from this is that I was proclaiming the blood of Jesus. I was proclaiming the name of Jesus non over stop. the nonstop. I like every pound is like in the name of Jesus, just speaking life. But it, it doesn't even have to be that urgent. It can be something that has been happening in your life. Like to plead the blood of Jesus, there is power in his name, guys. There is power in his name. His name is life. I, I mean, I think we both were kind of doubting ourselves whether or not we should make this film. There was a lot of opposition in trying to film this video. This happened, what, already a week ago? Mm -hmm. More than a week ago? We have, we have tried and there's been something that comes up. So I've been feeling the enemy say, it's pointless. But I don't really care. <laughs> well, one thing that I kept thinking was like, this happens all the time to kids. Like kids are always choking. Mm. But I believe with all my heart that something spiritual took place because of the severity of it and because of how I reacted. And I don't feel that it was just in and of myself. And as a mom, if you've ever seen your child that color, blue and purple with no life in them i mean you know that it's something pretty serious the enemy has been trying to minimize what god did and i refuse mm -hmm. so we are here to tell you guys what happened um, almost two weeks ago now to my son you want to start with your perspective of it or sure So we're all sitting at this table and I was washing the dishes. My mom was washing the dishes. We didn't know what to eat that night. And my mom remembered that there was some frozen soup that she had made. And so she gets it out the freezer and she puts it on the stove to defrost. I just remember it taking forever to defrost. It's a block of ice and I keep on, you know, getting the spoon and flipping the block over so that it can hurry up and eat up because my son was hungry. I knew that I let it sit for just a little bit too long and it was pretty hot. When I served him, I knew it was hot, but my son is really smart and if I tell him, hey, it's hot, blow on it, he knows to wait a little while. So everybody's talking and you know what? We were talking about something that we shouldn't have been talking about. We were about. gossiping. We were gossiping. And what's crazy is that the Holy Spirit had told me you don't stop talking about it. And I didn't listen. And I told my mom that I truly feel- Not that it was like- It was judgment from God. Like, oh, you wanna be gossiping? Like, but something spiritual was taking place. Yeah. And I do believe that when you partner yourself with the enemy, it gives him- Room to work. Yeah, it gives him an access door to come in and to create chaos. What I see in my mind is the enemy was watching us. He said, now is my opportunity. Now is my chance. And all I know is that all of a sudden my mom gets up and she's like, he's choking, he's choking. And I look over at my son and it didn't seem like he was choking at all to any of us other than my mom. My stepdad was here, my stepbrother, my baby brother. None of us knew what she was referring to. We looked at her like she was crazy. But my son was in distress. He didn't make any noise. I don't remember making him making any noise because when I looked at him, he let out a couple of whines like, uh, uh, you know? I don't know. I don't remember that. I do remember just looking at him and him with his like mouth open and his eye like, and nothing coming out. And I'm like, he's choking. She saw something that nobody else did and you were fasting. Was that your third day of fasting? No, it was my second day. He's choking because I'm washing the dishes and my hands are full of soap and nobody moves or does anything. So then I rushed over there and I kind of like questioned it. Like, is he choking? Because nobody believed me. And then it, it like he, he couldn't say anything. So I was like, yes, he's definitely choking. And she grabs him out of his high chair. This is from my perspective. 
I mean, roughly, you grabbed him and you were like, he's choking. And you started to hit him very aggressively. And at that point, you said that your husband, he got irritated oh, with yeah. you. Yeah. He mentioned to me after the fact, like, I thought you were tripping. Like, I... And I, I definitely did. We had company over and I was embarrassed because of how you <laughs> grabbed him and how you started doing that. I was like, what is she tripping on? Because still up until this point, I thought that my son had burned himself and he, he was just letting out a little cry. And my husband was like, I got upset with you because I was like, why are you hitting him? Um, and like I said earlier is it wasn't, I wasn't acting on my own account because I not only, I didn't know what I was doing, first of all. Like she blacked out. Yeah, like once I got him, like something spiritual was taking place because I began to proclaim life over him, like immediately, like this child will live in the name of Jesus. I don't even remember exactly what I was saying. She was just like, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. And while she's doing that, we're still thinking that she's absolutely insane. Yeah. But then I begin to see my son not breathing. Well, he like I blue. seen him. I seen him like. That's when I noticed that he couldn't get something out. He couldn't get any words out, and he began to turn a different color. And I, that's when it became real to all of us when we seen his color change. Yeah, the sense of severity was immediate for me. And I think it had to, it had be, to be because be of her fast. Because I was fasting, I was more in tune with the spirit, maybe. Because um, it, it wasn't plain to the naked eye. It truly wasn't. That's why we all thought that she was crazy. There was somebody on each angle. We did not see what you saw. Yeah, so after pounding him a little bit, I flipped him back up to check on him. And that's when everybody noticed that he was blue and oh limp, gosh. just like lifeless. I tried to like stand him up to support himself and there was there was nothing there. And so at that point, everybody realized, okay, we only have a minute or so. A little we bit of only time. have a few seconds to, I mean, when you're in that situation, you don't really know what to do. Nobody knew what to do. Well, like you said, I think that everybody played a role in just how certain things, like my husband was not supposed to be here. The only reason he came back home was because he forgot his phone and my husband, but he, he realized he forgot his phone when he was driving down the street and he was still in the neighborhood and typically if he ever forgets his phone he'll come back for it but he didn't and he just left it here and i can't remember the last time my husband forgot his phone for hours and just didn't try to come pick it up but then after the movie he went to go see um sound of freedom. the sound of freedom after the movie he came back home so he was here and he was the one that made the 911 call because yeah, so I remember somebody screaming, I, I think it was you, call 911, call the ambulance, call the ambulance. I had just seen my son turn this color um, and I panic. I, I run to my room to grab my phone, but I'm in such a frenzy that I, I don't even know what happened. It's kind of like I blacked out too and I didn't even grab my phone. I could not grab a hold of myself to, because I'm thinking to myself, he's dying, he's dying. And so I run back before I can even grab my phone because I, I just want to see my son. I wanted to be right there next to him. And so thank God, my, my stepdad, her husband, he said that he could not see him like that no more. He was like, I panicked. He was the one who started calling the ambulance. And thank God that he did that. And so my, my little brother couldn't handle that, that stress either. So he runs outside with his dad and his two friends were the company that was over. So these little boys start going to each neighbor and they're like, hey, call the ambulance. So we have the neighbors calling the ambulance. 
there's so much commotion going on and it's happening so quick but it feels like forever because he's right there like well, this I, and i think it took a while because he didn't start breathing again until the ambulance got here and i mean the ambulance didn't take a minute to get here so he was it was he was in that condition for a while yeah now that you say that that's pretty crazy and then while everybody's trying to find their place my mom is just shouting in the name of jesus in the name of jesus i speak life over this child she had him the entire time until the paramedics got here i i definitely feel that if any of you guys are ever in that situation you need to be bold i'm so glad that you were so bold because the enemy was truly trying to take him and it's crazy that you say that because how could he have been not breathing for that long and not even needed like CPR or something after? My son was healed. My son was, was healed because of your job. boldness. Yeah, we didn't even mention to them that like when I, cause I kept checking on him, you know, to see how he was doing. And at one point- Like, it, it's frantic though. This is, this, this is, is like all... happening fast, but at oh. the same time for a while yeah so i when i came back from getting trying to get my phone and like i said my stepdad was already outside i my son has choked before never nearly that crazy but he has choked before and anytime that he does i'm not even scared of that happening at that point because I'll stick my finger down his little throat and I'll take out whatever is making him choke, like within a matter of a couple seconds. He's never got to that point. So I tried that method and I stuck my finger in his throat while my mom is holding him and my son convulsed? What would the word be? Well, Eugene described it as like he was having a seizure because his like little hands started to twist his little and yeah, his and jaws his little... obviously locked because he like would not release her finger. So I stuck my finger trying to get to the back of his throat, but all I got was to his little tongue and he bit down. And again, my son is like purple at this point and he just bit down and he's not able to move. Seizing him. And I, I tried to pry it out and I started screaming because it hurt so bad. I was like, Ma, he won't let go he won't let go and i finally get it out it reminded me of like a bulldog when they don't want to let go of their prey i'll insert a picture of my finger but it's still there and again this was this was two weeks ago but he left me a pretty good mark and i just remember all night my finger hurting because my poor baby he just chomped down and like i said he was dying and he couldn't release my finger the main thing that we want people to take away from this is that i was proclaiming the blood of jesus i was proclaiming the name of jesus non-stop the, non-stop and like every pound is like in the name of jesus speaking life my husband said that when he was outside that he heard me saying something about satan and typically um all oh yeah, you were like, Satan, you will not have this child. You will not have this child. You will not take him from us. And also, my stepbrother was speaking life into me because I was so like mm -hmm. shaken. And he was like, Mariah, it's coming out. It's coming out because I tried to get my finger in there again. And I so seen I, him start to drool. And yeah. that's when I got hope. Yeah. I picked him up and he was like... He wasn't blue anymore and he's like uh, like gasping for air and then it was like okay let's do this like it's coming out in the name of jesus and that's when ej told you it's coming out and coming out. you put your finger in and you were able to grab it when it finally came out the upper part that i'm gonna circle had fallen off into the soup because we used chicken drumsticks and he was choking on that big piece of cartilage and then he just started Crying. yes and it, it's like it, it reminds me of um when you give birth and you you hear that cry for the first time it's like mm -hmm. life 
Yeah, like, and then after that, I, all I could say was, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank she you, just Jesus. kept repeating it. Like, you were in a trance. Yeah, that I whole really time. was. Because it's like, it was. it's pretty vague to me. Um, and all of us were speaking life. I know that every single person in that room was praying over my son mm -hmm. the entire time. And my little brother comes in at some point and he's like, what did he say? Oh, yeah. He's like, leave. In Jesus' name, I don't know exactly what he said. I just remember him saying, leave. And, and he must have been talking to some evil force, you know, that he felt. And then, um, and that's when Alakai started crying. Um, but I do want to make a point about what you're saying is I do think that people often blame God for, for things like that. But I don't, I don't, the Bible says that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. And... I think that that was an attack from the enemy. Definitely. Oh, so glad that you mentioned that because earlier that day, I seen a video that really upset me about abortion. And I told my mom, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a TikTok mm -hmm. and I'll show you guys which one it was right here. And I said, I'm going to upload a TikTok because I feel like getting in a fight today. <laughs> I said, I feel like fighting the enemy. I'm very passionate about abortion. I'm very passionate about, you know, save the babies. Hashtag save the babies. And I feel like he took that personal. And like I said, when he saw that opportunity, when we were speaking about somebody that we shouldn't have, he said, now is my chance. Like, let me, let me, who knows if somebody even seen that abortion video because so many people got mad and was like, I hope her child dies. I don't know why I think that every time like if somebody prayed an evil prayer, who knows what happened that night. All I know is that the enemy planned it. He really conspired. But to no prevail. Thank you, Jesus. Yes. Thank you, Jesus. To no prevail. Well, I mean, by the time the ambulance pulled up, like simultaneously, he, he was okay. He started breathing. And they checked him, and, and he was fine, thank God. And I just held my baby. I was prompted to fast earlier that week. And so, I mean, God knows everything, right? And then you you posted your video, and I think that kind of stirred. Something in the spiritual realm. Yeah, with the enemy. And so God is faithful because he prepared us and we were victorious. You know what else makes me definitely know that the enemy was behind it is that later on that night, everybody was attacked again. Oh, yeah. So I was putting my son to bed and I kept checking his breathing. I kept making sure that he was okay because like I said, he sieged out and we weren't sure if maybe he wouldn't sleep well from all the pounding that had been done. And I just remember laying in my bed and seeing him in his little crib asleep. And the enemy put something in my mind because it wasn't me. It wasn't my thoughts. Like, that's not something I would think. But he put in my mind, like, I just got a vivid picture of us at my baby's funeral and him in the little coffin. And it brought tears to me. Yeah, definitely it was a strategy to... Um plant fear in all of us because we all woke up with nightmares. My husband did, I did, my son woke up and he's like, hey guys, um, are you guys okay? And we're like, yeah, we're fine. He's like, is Alakai, is Alakai okay? Yeah, and he's like, I'm having bad dreams that Alakai died. So, I mean, I, I know there, there was something spiritual taking place. The enemy was trying to do something in he was trying to plant fear in us as well. I mean, and then the next morning I woke, wake up and I'm just like so grateful for mm -hmm. his life. Like, so empowered the next day. Yeah, like, yeah, just a sense of boldness and like a revelation of what the name of Jesus can do. Because, I mean, I don't know how many people are going to be able to relate, but 
something happened like the name of jesus like really saved his life like i believe it with all my heart and i think that that's that would be the most important thing to take away from this is like we if you come to a place where nothing is working and you you can't even think because of how drastic the situation it doesn't even is. have to be like so urgent because that was urgent like it was life or death like at this moment but it, it doesn't even have to be that urgent it can be something that has been happening in your life like to plead the blood of jesus there is power in his name guys there is power in his name his name is life it's love and the other thing I would say to take away is that um, I think that, I mean, it would be it would have been very unfortunate had it gone south. And I know that it has for some people. People have lost loved ones and in, in situations that may have not made sense. You know, it, and I think that the enemy uses those situations to to cause people to hate God, but we must direct our attention that there is an enemy that is after our souls and he does come to kill, steal, and destroy. And on and, and the flip side, there's a God that is love and, and a savior that has died for us and has given us authority over the enemy. He has no authority. And I would just say, take that position of authority and fight back spiritually with your mouth with your prayers um don't i used to be afraid of the enemy and i used to pretty much have this concept of like don't mess with me and i'm not gonna mess with you just leave me alone but he doesn't play that way he doesn't play fair mm -hmm. and he will take any opportunity that he can the verse comes to mind that we we will be able to tread on scorpions and snakes and not be bitten and not be hurt yes yes we have we have power we have the authority that has been given to us by jesus christ and what he has done it's nothing that we have earned or nothing that we have done we are righteous by what jesus has done and we have that authority and and we must use that authority yes and there's a specific mom in mind right now that um, I know that she did lose her son and um, I just want to close this video with a prayer because I'm sure that this might actually really hit home for a lot of people. Um, all I know is that the next day I felt such victory. I, I just wanted to go to church. I wanted to praise my Jesus and I, I feel this sense of in worship. I just raise my hands now. I don't care who's looking because life is so short. And when something like that happens, if you know, you know, when somebody dies or it comes close to death, you begin to realize that we focus on such fickle things. We focus on things that don't matter. And all that matters at the end of the day is your relationship with God because life is so unpredictable. And you have to be ready. You have to be ready because like my mom said, the devil does not fight fair. So we're going to end this video with prayer. I pray that this resonated with you guys. And um, we love you. So Heavenly Father, I thank you, God. I thank you for life. I thank you for light, Jesus. And I just, I lift my hands up to you, God, because you are a good, good God. And when things happen, Jesus, that we don't understand, I pray that you would just remind us that you have never left us, mm -hmm. that you have never forsaken us, God, and that you never put us through things that we cannot handle. When you, when you find yourself in pain, beloved, remember that, consider it a blessing to go through trials of many kinds because that's when your perseverance, that's when your you are molded and refined and you are perfected and you are ready for the rest of the stuff and Jesus I'm just I'm so thankful for my son and I just pray that you would replace the darkness in people's lives and the loss God the losses that have happened I pray that you would fill them with life with with hope God and and bring 
new children about God. I pray that it would be like a garden in their life where new things would grow from the ashes, Heavenly Father. We thank you, we thank you, we thank you because you are such a good God and we do not deserve it, Father. And we love you. We I'm thank you. Father, I thank you for this opportunity, God, and I just pray that you will use it to be glorified, Father, not to bring us any glory, but to, to put you on the throne and, and glorify you and uplift you, Father. And I just pray, God, for the people that are watching, God, that you would give them an understanding that you are a good God, a revelation that you are a good God, that you are for them and not against them, Father. I pray that they will be able to distinguish the acts of the enemy versus your acts, God, that they would attribute um, evil to, to the enemy, Father, and good to you, Father. I pray that you would just embrace them with your love, with your comfort, God, um, and I just pray blessing over them in Jesus' mighty name. And turn around in Jesus' name. <laughs> turn around, devil. Get out of here. Okay. We love you guys. And we'll see you in the next one. God bless.